Good evening and welcome to our Midweek Faith Lift. Today is uh, Wednesday, September 28th, 2022. Welcome to our uh, podcast. My, as you all know, my name is Shannon Lebrun and I'm from Unity of Chattanooga. And of course, you know that we do this podcast every Wednesday at or around 4 o'clock p.m. And you can follow us on the Unity of Chattanooga a Facebook page. You can also follow us, Friends of Unity of Chattanooga. And you can follow us on our YouTube channel, which is Unity of Chattanooga. Today, I have a special guest to join us. Um, he's someone that I met at the Celebrating Our Soul Spiritual Conference out in Unity Village a couple weeks ago. And I must say to my viewers that uh, I've been um, staying in touch with this brother for the last, uh, what, uh, I would say about maybe month now. Uh, we talk to each other several times a day, and we make it our business to talk with each other at least once a day at 5 a.m. every morning. And on weekends, we, we talk to each other at 7 a.m. And we also have another person that joins us. Her name is Michelle Brown. She's not with us today. But I wanted to uh, invite uh, uh, Kata into our broadcast um, to um, give us a little background information on, on um, our relationship and how that relationship has grown and how, for me, my spirituality has grown. And I want to check in with him to see how his spirituality has um has grown also so without further ado i want to bring in my friend kata bay kata are you there i'm right here hi shannon how are you today doing well good i hope you're well i am i am um, of course we talked this morning at 5 a.m like we do every morning yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you you want to tell the viewers a little bit about how how we met? <clears throat> well, thank you, thank you for having me on your podcast, Shannon. It's an honor to be with you, and it's an honor to know you. And so I'm I met Shannon at the at Unity Village in Lee's Summit, Missouri, and uh, it was for a conference. People of African descent, New Thought Group, hosted a uh, Celebrating Our Souls conference. And uh, it was life-changing for me. So about the first day, I uh, attended the, facility, the festivities of that morning, and uh, I was going into the restroom, and I met this brother. And he stopped me on the way in. He says, I want to talk to you when you come back out. Uh, he, he must have known, seen how <laughs> much of a hurry I was in <laughs> to get to the inside. So I said, of course. So when I came out, he said he wanted to uh, interview me. And I thought that was, uh, I thought maybe he was part of the whole production, you know. And I found out later he just wanted to get some viewpoints from people some attendees of how we uh, reacting to the first day of the conference, what we thought, uh, some personal commentary about it. And so I did, I said what I had to say, I was excited. Uh, it was something I could tell was uh, quite uh, well put together. Just for that short time, I could tell that I'm in the right place at the right time. So Shannon reached out to me first and it became an instantaneous bonding uh, that we've kept ever since. That was on the 11th of August. And uh, here it is, uh, the end of September. And every day we talk, uh, along with Michelle, who I met and he met. And uh, we were introduced to each other as a result. And uh, I think I asked Michelle, have you met Shannon? And that's how Shannon came. Pull Michelle got pulled into our little threesome and it's been a wonderful experience of communicating and sharing and growing and learning and uh exploring our spirituality so uh that's how we got started yeah Katie, thank you i must say that you know um it, it's been a rewarding experience for me and um i certainly see how um and feel how my spirituality has improved as a result of you know, talking with you and Michelle on a regular basis. I mean, one of the things that we do, and I want to let our viewers know, is that we um, we read the Daily Word every morning, um, and that definitely sets our our um, puts our spirituality in, in 
in its proper perspective as, as far as putting it first in the morning, you know. Um, that's one of the things that we do. Uh, we, we read that daily word and then we each go around and, and share on what we, what we hear from it. And most of the time we all hear something just a little different, but we definitely um, put, put a practical spin on it on how we can apply that in our lives on a, on a regular basis or especially in that, for that day. Um, so how has that been for you specifically, you know, just reading the daily word, um, sharing on that, um, and, and also just, you know, having a relationship with people um, from different, you know, parts of the country? How has that been for you? Well, because of us working together with a single purpose to expand our spirituality and to advance our frequency to a higher frequency to become more intimately involved with spirit. Uh, I'm, I'm now, when I read the Daily Word, it has a different meaning to me. It's like, I'm a, I'm a, it's expanded my ability to discern what the message is about. And it's, it's like I'm being reborn. Uh, I, I, I write a newsletter for my church, uh, a column, just about every week. And I'm letting the viewers know, the readers know that I'm a changed man. I truly am. So everything is, I'm seeing through, everything through the lens of as God, as opposed to uh, hoping to have a relationship with somebody outside of myself that I call God. And the daily word is now a living uh, testament to what we're doing as a group. It's expanding our consciousness by giving us daily messages that are so relevant. It's like synchronicity every day. It's, it's relevant to each one of us. And it's uncanny how that happens because we've got, the readership is probably several million uh, worldwide. But uh, it's like it's speaking to each one of us individually about this quest that we are on. So uh, today's daily word is let go, let God. And I've seen that so many times uh, in the Daily Word uh, messages, but it now makes a, a big difference when I read it. Uh, that's exactly what I'm striving to do, is to let go of the preconceived ideas that I've been given through my experience as first a member of the Baptist Church and now as a member of Unity. I've learned different sayings, different ways of it, seeing God, but this this change that I embarked on that I, that happened uh, the week of August 11th has now helped me to see the daily word in a more uh, personal way and a more freeing way, enlightening way. I, it's hard to explain, but I tell you, I, I'm at a point where now I know too much and I will never go back to the way I used to be as a result of uh, going to the village for that conference. Yeah, you, you mentioned um, earlier um, as God, and that's something that um, has been uh, transforming for me. And you, you've, I think you've, you've reiterated that in our group over and over again. You know, Shannon, you have to see things as God, you know, and you and, um, you and God are one. And that's a concept that was hard for me to, to grasp, especially coming from my Baptist background. Um, but slowly it's, per, it's permeating, permeating into, my, into my psyche. And I'm, I'm beginning to, to practice to practice that on a regular basis. Can you tell our viewers a little bit more about that that whole concept as God and how difficult that it, that may be for some of us um, in um, New Thought to to conceive and why it's it's been difficult for some of us to to conceive? Well, you've just asked this. They used to say sixty four thousand dollar question. You know, I'm 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 a little senior than you, so. Uh, you may not even remember that, but uh, that's a, a saying. And uh, that is everything. And I'm, that's not new. New thought has been uh, positioning me for this enlightenment uh, ever since I've been involved with new thought, which I started back at Unity Church in 1986. That's how long I've been at Unity. But unity now is new, fresh. The perspective has evolved to where I'm embracing 
as God more than ever. I don't even remember hearing as God until I went to the village. And when I went to the village, uh, to that conference, the uh, Celebrating Our Souls conference, it, it was mentioned. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, I am that I am. You know, and I read it. I've heard it. I've seen it. Uh, said it, I am that I am, thinking that that's what God told Moses when he asked, who shall I say sent me, you know, when he brought the Ten Commandments down from the mountain. Tell them, I am sent you. And uh, so I am that I am I caught on. I even have it on my screen, on my, on my phone. But with the Celebrating Our Soul Conference, it became personal as God that I am is what I am. And so now when I say as God, it means I am the voice. I am the legs. I am the ears. I am the eyes of God. I am the taste of God. God is, or as, as Eric Butterworth said many years ago, I am being, being me. So being, being the allness, being the, the the omnis omniscient omnipresent presence is actually talking right now as hoarse as I am. God is speaking through my vocal cords, and it is a concept that is so freeing, so liberating, but also so challenging because to get to that state where it is momentary, moment by moment, as God. Uh, it would be liberating to the point where I have the same potential and I can exercise that potential at will the more I incorporate it into my being. So as God would mean that I am the Christ because the consciousness of the Christ is not Jesus Christ. It is, he was the way sure, as we say, to say that this you can do and I can do greater. But the Christ consciousness that he uh, demonstrated to us can even overcome death. So if I emulate uh, Jesus the Christ in, in finding my own spark of divinity and expanding that, I will be just as powerful or, as he promised, even more powerful. So, but I've been... When I came to this earth, I adopted all the rules of how to exist in this body, in this three-dimensional experience, and this lower frequency. So as God is my invitation to a being and a living, experiencing life in this 3D experience at a higher vibration than everybody else. Not to say that I'm going to be any better, because everybody can do it. but I believe I've been given my marching orders, not just to contemplate it, not just to think about it, but to be it. And so that's the concept of as God came from that conference. And they also challenged us, now that you've got this new perspective, go out and do something with it. So that's my goal is to first demonstrate it in myself, and then I can be a light and a standard for others to see that all you got to do is just accept the fact that you are God. And we've been trained to believe that God is some white haired, long beard guy in a far off distant galaxy or dimension right. that's looking down on us and judging us constantly. But now I see it differently. I see that I am the harshest critic and judge of myself. Wow. And the only thing I can do is just, experience the love that is within me that causes me that animates me and at, 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 if i'm experiencing it at not even as much as the faith of a mustard seed uh -huh. if i can expand that to the mustard seed i can move a mountain the only way i can do that is to open my consciousness to be as god see things as god would see it or i used to wear a little uh uh a necklace that said, what would Jesus do? It have WWJD on one side <laughs> or the other. Yeah, I remember that little, little WWJD. Yeah, yeah, that was very popular. Yeah. Well, as God is very much like that, 
But I, and what I, what I'm, I'm so happy to say that Shannon and Michelle, which you don't see, we're just like, we're just like three people coming together as one and our single purpose when we meet over the phone is to talk about how can we incorporate this as Godness, as I say, into our being to where it's second nature. Right now, my second nature is my super, subconscious mind repeating all the stuff that I've learned and referencing new information to that old information and keeping me limited in that paradigm. But to experience the opening of my soul to experience, woo, just saying that is, it's hard to say it without getting emotional. Mm -hmm. it's, my, it's my goal. And it should be everybody's goal. So what I'm saying, Shannon could say, Michelle could say, probably better than me. But the goal is to us to help each other and support each other. Uh, as uh, the uh, African saying is, Ubuntu, I am because you are, Shannon. And I, you are because I am. So there is no difference. I am presence is everywhere, everything, every thought, past, present, future. It's all one thing. And I am just a, there's an old saying, there's an old song, you know, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody <laughs> about somebody who can save everybody. Well, there's nobody to save. There's nothing to be saved from. But there is a light within me that is growing. I know it. Right. And as it grows, or as the old saying, uh, rising tide lifts all boats. Hopefully I will be, uh, it'll be easier for somebody else to, to begin to witness who they really are and testify to that and embrace that if they see somebody else doing it. So I am Kata the Christ, Shannon the Christ, <laughs> Yell the Christ. We're all the Christ, uh, John Doe the Christ. There's no difference except you've got to you got to just work it, work the system. The system has been given to us. Just think about it, and then make the uh, commitment. And as God will reveal itself as you in a higher expression of yourself. I hope that explains, or I hope that at least begins to quicken somebody's imagination to see that. Yeah, it might be difficult to change your mind. But it's not hard to begin seeing things differently. And I'm telling you, synchronicity is incredible. Can you can you can you share a little bit on 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 what on on the battle, on what the battle is with the with the subconscious mind and what and how that comes about as far as the programming? Can you share a little bit about that? Well, it's uh we can term it in the human side of life as uh, a battle. Uh but it is a uh it's a habit. What we've, what we've actually uh, come into this world is to absorb all of the rules and the, uh, the, the constructs of this experience from people who've been here before. And it's pretty much, they call it race consciousness. It's not racial consciousness. It's the human race consciousness. So we're just buying into a construct that has been formed by people before us. And it's been advancing at a very slow rate. It most of, it's all competitive. And we're talking about cooperation here. We're going from, it's like a barter system that has getting, gotten into fiat money where a money represents what the goods. So you no longer have to transport those goods. You just give them a dollar or a check. Well, we have been, in a barter system as far as spirituality is concerned. And we need to advance to a higher level of consciousness where the dit the currency is light is, is, is God. God is our universal currency. And so we, once we embrace that, we no longer need to go back to the barter system. We can cash our, our check of divinity that is contrary to what we've been taught. We've been taught we, that we're slaves, we're filthy rags, we're 
uh, we will we'll never be as good as Jesus because they're personifying Jesus as a man who overcame even death. But he gave us a promise and said, first of all, he's going to leave the Holy Spirit with us to help us. And also he says, these things I do, ye shall do, and greater. So if we just set our sights on the man, Jesus, that somebody that was lucky enough or was a, an angel that came that to show us the way, but we can never be that, then that's exactly what we're going to get. So if we set our sights on the universal construct of God is me, expressing as me, then everybody has that same opportunity to uh, experience what the three of us are experiencing. Uh, the synchronicity of the daily word is incredible. It literally speaks to us where we've already been talking about the next day. The daily word is giving us clarity, but the synchronicity doesn't stop there. And I see it daily in so many small things. That's amazing. What we talk about seems to, there, there's a new information that'll come as a result. If I'm, if I turn on the internet and I go to uh, YouTube and I just <laughs> turn on YouTube, I'll see something that is relevant to what we talked about yesterday or even that morning. Uh, as controversial as Reverend Ike is in new thought, even, uh, I had I hadn't even thought much about new, uh, Reverend Ike, but suddenly we were talking about something earlier that morning in our discussion. Then I happened, to, Reverend Ike came up, and he was talking about the very same thing, but he was explaining it in a way that that just was so enlightening. So I share, mm -hmm. we share stuff like that. So the synchronicity is we've asked for it, and we we're getting it, mm -hmm. and all we got to do is just ask our, ourselves. What's the agenda today? We set our intentions, the three of us. And uh, so we're working the system and everybody can do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here I am. It's taken seven decades to get to this point. Can you imagine a young person starting out, you know, maybe graduated from high school or college, embracing what we're doing right now, the three of us, how much further along, how much better their life will be? Well, uh, I'm expecting small things. God clear up this sore throat. But a young person would, would say, I want to change the world. Wow. Well, as God, that young person got a better chance to achieving that because he's, I just imagine a young child embracing what we're talking about. Right. That's the new thought message that we were given at the village. Take this and take it back home, take it to your village and do something with it, spread yeah. it. So I say that I'm, I'm going to be like the, uh, the, uh, uh, the person in the, in the jet, the, the lady, what do you call it, Stuart? The flight attendant. The flight attendant. Stuart, yeah. old, old school. Yeah, Stuart. they're not stewardess no more, babe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they don't say that. call them stewardess, you know? <laughs> the, the, the flight attendant. Right. <laughs> he said, when she's going through the motions of how to, what happens if the cabin pressure drops, she says, you put it on first. You put that oxygen on first, because if you try to put it on your child or your children and you pass out, you're not going to do any good. Right. So our goal is to get this within ourselves to begin to deprogram from all of that separateness, the duality of God is out there. And 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 embrace who you really are, your true divinity first. You get that, then the rest is automatic. So that's that's our goal. Yeah. The three of us. I wish Michelle was here because she's a master storyteller. Yeah. And she'll, <laughs> she'll put incidents in her life to explain, to, to gra graphically explain what we're talking about. So if I say something, it always triggers something she's already done, you know, and, and it goes hand in hand. So I really miss Michelle and not being here, but so I'm, I'm doing all this talking to try to get it all in. Uh, but uh, it's just a joy to be able to talk about it. It's so 
freeing. I don't have time to worry about anything because I'm too much engrossed in being as God, you know, that's above all of that, but I'm not there yet. So no, don't get me wrong. You know, I haven't, I haven't changed water to wine, but, uh, <laughs> but that's coming. That's coming. That's coming. That's coming. Yeah. Well, save you, a lot of money that way. <laughs> yeah, babe, I want to um, invite our, our viewers of, if they have any questions, they can, they're more than welcome to send a, um, and, um, an email to, uh, um, and I'm going to pull that up real quick. Uh, they're more than welcome to send an email to uh, contact at unityofchattanooga.org. Um, if you if you want more information about our podcast or if you have a question about what was discussed today on our podcast, you can um, email us at contact at unityofchattanooga.org. Um, now, babe, uh, you, you, you said that you have a newsletter that you that you um, that you produce. On a what is that a weekly or 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 daily basis or a monthly basis? How often do you produce your newsletter? Where's the newsletter from, and how can our viewers go about getting a copy of that newsletter? Um, well, and you might uh, want to say the email very slowly. If you do have, I don't really, before. I don't really produce it. Mm -hmm. I write a column called "Did You Know." Mm -hmm. It's it's evolved since I've uh, uh, been doing it for about. Uh, almost a year now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was first about things that uh, happened in the progress progress of uh, black, African-American, colored, Negro people, uh, how the cooperation between whites and Jews were happening back at the time when uh, slavery was going on, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. and and through Jim Crow and all of that. But it has evolved now. Mm -hmm. uh, to, did you know that you could be as God? <laughs> it's, it's, it's completely changed. Wow, that's amazing. So it's, 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 it is uh, because I am being very transparent you have, you and telling them what's going on with me uh, during this transformation period, just like a journal, you know. And so uh, it's 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 published on, online through our church, uh, unitymemphis.org. And you would have to, uh, uh, let's see, it's office at unitymemphis.org and just request to be added to the newsletter list. And you'll get uh, columns from announcements of what's going on at our church and my newsletter is included. Did you know? And so, uh, but I want to, I want to deviate from that mm -hmm. in, in the remaining time we have. Uh, I want to read to you the latest, and it's like a commercial for uh, Michelle. We get inspired to do things. So she was inspired to try to get a labyrinth in Athens, Georgia, where she lives. So she's communicated with the, the county and now she's inspired to uh, to get to unify people during this election process. And and you would like all unity churches, all new thought churches to make do an affirmation every Sunday at church to pray for affirm unity amongst the different um, the different political parties and also government officials. So if I could just read this letter that she sent to her chaplains at Unity of Athens that I've embraced and I sent it to my minister and he's embraced it. And so we're gonna start this week, this Sunday to do an affirmation for the election so that everybody can come together and, 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 and not blame each other, but work for the common good of, of the people. So this is what she wrote. She wrote it to our chaplains. I am writing to you, to you all with great concern over the state of our nation. As we can all see, not allowing for bias, our politics have gotten out of hand. The fear amongst the people of America has reached a dangerous apex. It has now been reported by the Anti-Defamation League Center on extremism to Vanity Fair, 
and on BuzzFeed News that a leaked membership list of Oath Keepers, the far-right extremist group who played a key role in the insurrection at the Capitol, has over 81 members who are currently serving as elected officials or running for office. They hold local government positions, mostly state senators, but a few who are members of the House of Representatives. 373 work currently in law enforcement, including 10 police chiefs and 11 sheriffs. Also, more than 1,000 have prior law enforcement and tactical experience. This is not fear, just facts. Now, Michelle wrote this now. I'm not taking credit for it. It is an old new thought belief that says, I am responsible for the things I see. As an individualization of God, I feel it is time we connect as a prayer focus group to affect the world we live in and be the light bearing change agents we profess to be. As prayer warriors of new thought, we know it does not take an army to shift the consciousness, just as quote, a rising tide lifts all boats, end quote. We must be the change agents to lift and shift the tide. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. That's John 12, 32. And it goes on. Uh, let me see if I can get it to move. Well, oh, it is. My vision is to use the God force in, all, in us all to change the tide, not in a general sense, but with focused intent to be the change we all want to see and experience. What follows are some examples of what could be read on Sundays and posted inside. Uh, at that time, she was writing to Unity Athens, Unity of Athens, and on our social media sites, as in these examples. Quote, we pray that Republicans, Democrats, independents, all people will see the best in each other and desire to work together and open with open hearts and minds for the good of all. Or we affirm that all elected officials and leaders will work for the good of all people, regardless of political affiliation, race, gender, or creed. So, she says, below is the prayer that is now being affirmed at Unity of Athens every Sunday during our church service until our country's midterm national election. That's only six weeks away. Mm -hmm. Here's a short prayer, a prayer for political peace. Let us take a deep breath together, focus within, and feel our divine creator, the seat of infinite source. As we center ourselves in the presence of the divine, we focus our attention on America, our home. We see all people acting with integrity to resolve conflicts peacefully. We affirm Democrats, Republicans, independents, all peoples are willing to work together with open hearts and minds in unity for the collective good, letting go of all fear for uh, and fear for faith and love. In other words, going from fear to faith and love. Mm -hmm. We see people recognizing their own divinity as God. She didn't put that in there, but I'm just adding that in there. <laughs> and as they do, they see each other aligned with their divine, with divine source. We affirm that all elected officials and leaders are willing to work together for the common good of all people, regardless of political affiliation, race, color, or creed, letting go of fear in favor of faith, harmony, and love. We are so grateful to feel the joy of knowing that our country's absolute good and well-being is manifesting now. It is done, and so it is. Thank you, God. To God. Thank is that not masterful? It is masterful. You got to do a good thing. Well, I'm definitely going to be a, 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 well, we're actually broadcasting that now on our Unity of Chattanooga 
uh, Facebook page. Um, but it's definitely something I want to introduce to our congregation, and I'll be um, uh, looking to, um, to bring that prayer to our minister, who I look forward to seeing actually today and uh, see what his, his thoughts are about it. Because it's definitely about, you know, us com coming together and, and praying for the, the common good of this country, you know, all people, regardless of age, race, sexual identity, creed, religion, lack of religion. It's just, just about us all coming together for the best interest of all people. And I think that's a wonderful way to do that is for us to, you know, to um, start, start our service out or sometime during the service to, to um, affirm that prayer. Yeah. Um, but you Bay, I want to put your um before we go, I want to put your um your uh address back, your website address for the church that you are part of. Um I created something while you were talking and, I, and hopefully I can find it because you know I'm not the best at at um uh, always keeping up with things, but I think I have it. Uh where did I put it? I put it somewhere. Well, can you tell it to us again while I'm looking for it? Well, the email address is Oh, I didn't put the email address up. Um, um, say the email address. That's cool. I believe it's, let me see. I think it's business office at unitymemphis.org. Uh, unitymemphis.org would get you the website, I, I do believe. We're on Facebook as well. I don't know that. I don't really do Facebook that much. And I wish I was more prepared. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, hopefully those two ways would be how you can connect with our church. Yeah, I have it up. It's up www.unitymemphis.org. Um, yes. They go to that website. They'll be able to email, email you, well, email the church and uh, the church administrator. And if they are interested in getting a copy of the newsletter, they can get a copy there. Um, yeah. 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 And also and our like, are there. We brought, we stream our services, services every Sunday. So, We'll have a link to sermon.net is where we host our, all of our services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, babe, before uh, I, I want to thank you, I want to thank you for, for coming out and joining me. And uh, I'm looking forward to um, for uh, us, you know, you and Michelle being on the podcast together. I think that'll be uh, the next treat for our viewers. So I'd I, love it. Yeah, I'd love that. Um, and, you know, again, we're going to be, more than likely talking again uh, uh, first thing in the morning at five o'clock. So um, <laughs> that's just something that, that I enjoy doing with you. I'm sure you enjoy doing it. Uh, but I want to thank you again for coming out. I want to remind our viewers um, if they are, um, if they feel like this podcast has been a blessing to them, they're welcome to share this podcast with, um, with their friends and family. Um, uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can like, share or follow us um at um facebook and also you can join our facebook group which is friends of unity um that's a facebook group that we have on facebook it's called friends of unity of chattanooga you can actually um request to join that group and there's a lot of information on that on that um in that group about about our podcast about our church service um but bay before i go um do you have any any final um, last minute words you want to you want to share with us before we go? I had a dear friend that in his last dying breath, he would say, honor God, honor God. And I, I, I see it differently now. Honor God within that is within you. That is waiting this. It's like. The, the you that is really you, the, that's deep down, the spiritual you, is waiting for you to catch up. And you giving honor to yourself is not being selfish. It's being self-aware that you are much greater than you think. Mm. And there's no obstacle that can ever overcome you when you're in alignment with the God essence that is the I am that is you. And uh, if people get that, maybe that will be the spark to get people to begin to explore like we are and get on this journey like we are to see how far we can go with this and to realize the fruits of our labor. Well, that, that's definitely a good way uh, to close our podcast. I want to thank our viewers for coming out. I want to thank you again, Katie Bay, for joining us. 
and we'll see you next time on um, our broadcast. Thank you. Thank you.